Hi there, this is Pastor Sherman Burkhead, and this is Grace and Truth, a devotion that's meant to encourage you and challenge you to grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ through a time in the Word and time in prayer. Um, I was just actually looking at an article by Tim Challies talking about devotions and time in the Word and time in prayer, and he said, you know, one of the most important things that people can do is make sure they get in the Word and get in prayer. Um, sometimes we overcomplicate things about how we do these things, but um, so this is why I do this, is I want to help you to get into the Word and help you to spend some time in prayer. Good afternoon, Christy. It's good to, to uh, hear from you again. And I uh, just want to just reach out and say thank you all um, for, for joining me today. I know that uh, it's been a week. Um, actually, I got a chance to spend a week with the youth group up at uh, Big, Big Bear for, um, uh, for camping. Um, obviously, they didn't get a chance to go to Human Lake this year because they shut that down. So we did our own little camp. And I got to tell you, it was a great time. Uh, I was really grateful, and this is what I'm going to talk about gratitude-wise. I'm really grateful I got a chance to go and hang out with these kids. Not only because, excuse me, I got a chance to get to know them a little bit better, uh, but I'm really grateful that to see how you know God is working in their hearts. Good afternoon, Rick. Um, I'm really grateful to see how God is working in their in their lives. Um, we spent a lot of time, you know, talking about the gospel. We spent time going through the Book of Romans. Um, we, we did spend time together, hang, you know, hanging out. We also went, uh, we went on a couple of hikes and spent the day at the lake. And and one day we took them over to a little uh, amusement park and they got to play there as well. But every day we were in devotions in the morning. Uh, I had a message in the middle of the day. The kids had, you know, reflection time where they spent an hour with God on their own, where they were actually getting a chance to kind of go through the things that they were. Um, you know that they, that they were being exposed to and things that they've been thinking about, um, and then we did a, a devotion in the evening time. You know where we really focused on teaching them how uh, to to proclaim the gospel to their friends and their and their families and things like that. And um, it was just again great to to see them grow together and see them really kind of grow in their relationships with one another. Um, but it's especially. I was especially grateful to see them grow in their relationship with God. Um, and so that's what I'm grateful for this week. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful for, for lots of things, but that is something that's really on the forefront of my mind. And so I want to thank you guys for your patience this last week. Again, I was up in the mountains in a cabin and really didn't get a chance to do grace and truth at all last week. Um, I kind of like let you know that was going to happen. But this week we're going to be back on schedule. And just so you know, as we've been navigating when we're going to you know do episodes of grace and truth, I think Wednesdays are a perfect day to to do this i'm hoping that uh you know we do this a couple times during the week but we're still working out the schedule on that as we're as we're navigating how we're doing things going forward there's obviously a lot to do uh and a lot to think about also want to give you an update too um you guys are awesome um you know, we talked about uh, Wilson and his need for Bibles there in Kenya. Uh, I just want you to know, not only were we able to get them a bunch of Bibles, we got them Bibles so that they can have uh, for their for their church and the congregation because of your guys' generosity. Um, also, we were able to take some of the, of the extra money and send it to them to, to get food for their kids. Um, part of what what his ministry is is they have a, an orphanage that they that they're taking care of like I think I think it's almost 26 kids now uh, of all different ages little bitty from like two years old all the way up to like 13 and um, you know they're doing their best to take care of these children and help them to uh, to grow up and one of the things that they struggle with is food and we were able to give them some money for food um, and the kids were super excited um, hopefully I get to post a video about that really really soon so anyway thank you for your support for uh, what we're doing there as as well and so with that, uh, what are you grateful for? Um, I certainly like to hear from you. You can reach me out to me at fbcborn at gmail.com or you can call me at the office at 760-762-5149. Uh, I'd love to hear from you and what you're grateful for. And, and if you have questions about faith, if you have questions about you know the Christian life, I'd certainly like to talk to you and, and hear from you as well about those things. But uh, today, uh, I'd like to direct your attention to uh, Romans chapter 10. And we're going to be reading verses uh, 13 through uh, 15. Romans chapter 10, verses 13 through 15. And the word of the Lord reads, um, How then will they, excuse me, verse 13 reads, For everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. That's the promise, that those who put their trust in Christ will be saved. Who, who calls upon his name will be saved. But then Paul asked the question in verse 14, How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him whom they've never heard? And how are they to, to hear without someone preaching? And how will they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet 
of those who preach the good news. So one of the things that we talked about with the, the teens at youth group was what the gospel was, right? And we explained, you know, the content of the gospel and how to share the gospel. And the first thing I want to I want to share with you is 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 what the gospel is not. What the gospel is not is first of all your personal story. Your testimony is compelling as it is. Your story how you came to faith in Christ is not the gospel. That is your story. And I say that to say your story is important. Your story helps to connect to other people. Your story helps to, to relate to other people. In fact, I got a chance to tell my, my, uh, my story again. My, my, um, I got a chance to tell my testimony today on another podcast. By the way, I think it's like the sixth or seventh podcast I've been interviewed on for the book uh, Distracted, Finding God in a Chaotic World. Lots of fun things to do. It's really great to meet new people. But they always, when they find out I was an atheist before, they always want to know what my story is, right? And I'm always happy to tell them my story, but I remind them that my story is not the gospel. And, and the same with your story. Your story is not the gospel. Your story might be the lead-in for you explaining the gospel. Your story might be you know, helpful into getting people interested in the gospel, right? But it is not the gospel. The second thing to the gospel is not. The gospel is not simply the entrance into Christianity, right? You don't hear the gospel and then believe the gospel and then get saved and then move on to Christianity 2.0, right? It is always about the gospel. Your need for the gospel doesn't change the moment you get saved. You always need the gospel. You need to hear the gospel. You need to be reminded of the gospel. And you need to live in light of the gospel, right? So it's always the gospel. And this is one of the things I talked to the kids about. Um, but I also talked about the importance of us sharing the gospel. Because all of us, when we come to faith in Christ, we are not saved simply so we can be saved. We're not saved so that we can have, you know, you know, salvation as a as a bumper sticker to stick on our car. We are saved for to glorify God and for His purposes. And the way that we live to glorify Him and, and the purpose He has for us is to go out and share the gospel with other people. God has ordained for all of us to be a part of that mission. That's why Jesus said that we're to become disciples, we're to follow Him, to go where He goes and to join Him on His mission. And why did Christ come into the world? To glorify God by saving sinners. That's why Christ came into the world. And that means all of us have been enlisted in that you know, in that process. And so that's one of the things I've been talking to the youth group about. How's it going, Corbin? Um, I've been talking to the youth group about the gospel over and over again. We've been talking about it for actually for the last couple of years. But this, this time at camp, I really wanted to focus on the content of the gospel, what it is, and then give them a process by which they can actually then share the gospel with other people. And I say process because I don't believe in um, scripts in the sense that we have a hard and fast script of how you, you know, proclaim the gospel to someone. Because the fact of the matter is, is no matter who you talk to, it's going to be a different situation because people are in different places and you need to emphasize different points for different reasons, right? So I think a script, a follow along script that you need to memorize is not the answer, right? And the reality is, is like people aren't robots and people don't respond to scripts. And I think scripts are artificial, but there is certainly things that you do need to talk about in the gospel. There are bullet points or, or milestones that you have to cover. I mean, as, as, as people say, you know, in fact, even like, you know, uh, Todd White, who is somebody who I've been, I've, I've been critical of for, for a long time, um, he actually uh, had a message where he talked about the fact that he's been not preaching the full gospel. He, re he said he repents of that. Um, he's got some friends who, who watch the American gospel, trying to get him to watch that, and, caused him, and wanted him to repent of his kind of like, you know, more kind of prosperity teaching. And he's like, he looks like he's broken. But one of the things he said was, is that people are coming to Jesus for, for the wrong reasons. Like, People need to come to Jesus because there's going to be a judgment that comes against them. There's something we need to understand about the gospel. Otherwise, you really don't believe. In fact, one of the things I say over and over again is that you people will not take the medicine unless they know what the diagnosis is, right? And so if you tell people, come to Jesus and he'll make your life better, what happens when, when their life doesn't get better? Then they leave Jesus behind because that's not the reason why you come to Jesus, Right? Or when people says you need to come to Jesus because Jesus is going to make you healthy, wealthy, and happy because God wants you to be happy. And when that doesn't happen, or when you find that, that wealth doesn't actually like satisfy your soul, what happens then? Right? The reason why we come to Christ is because there's something that happens between us and God that causes us to need a Savior. That's the point of the gospel. 
And so with that being said, we talked through Romans, we worked through the text of Romans 1, and where we saw that like all of people know that God exists, right? But people suppress the truth and unrighteousness. And then we talked about Romans 3, where it said that basically all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and that the law can't save us. The works of the law can't help us. And then we went to... Um, to uh, Romans chapter 5 where we talked about the blessings of the gospel that once a person comes to faith in Christ that they are the wrath of God is taken away they're at peace with God and they are reconciled to God as one of his children and then we talked about Romans chapter 12 living in light of the gospel living this radically transformed life that comes from that new nature of being in Christ and and, and I mention all this is because then what we did is folk what we focused on was giving them some uh, a template by which they could share the gospel and it's a very simple one it's called life in six words and it's super super easy to remember um, and it's very flexible for you to be able to adapt it to whatever situation it is and it goes along with the acrostic gospel G O S P E L now I didn't come up with this actually dare to share ministries which is about teenage ministry actually came up with this and I've heard a couple of people use it but uh, gospel is is basically you know it goes like this so you start with a G again the acrostic G-O-S-P-E-L so it goes God our sin payment everyone life so you have God our sin payment everyone life and if you remember those words then you will remember the things that you need to cover when it comes to presenting the gospel so the gospel always begins with god god right i mean the reality is if you begin with you in the gospel then you've missed a big fundamental important issue because what the gospel is for is to remind us who god is who we are right and what's happened to our relationship with him and what God has done to make that relationship whole again. That's really the essence of the gospel. So it always begins with God. And so we always encourage the kids to talk about who God is. God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. He is holy, righteous, and just. He is sovereign and in control. And he created us in his image to have a relationship with him. That's the beginning, understand the gospel. If you don't understand that, you will never understand the gospel. God created everything, including us, and he created us to have a relationship with him. But, oh, our sin separates us from God. Mankind rebelled against God in the garden, and all of us have been born into sin ever since. We are dead in our sins and trespasses, as Paul says in Ephesians. We are, we are objects, of, we, are, we are children of wrath, as, as it says in Ephesians. Over and over again, the Bible condemns us and says that we are separated from God because of our sin. Our sin has created a gulf between us and God. And because of our sin, God's holy and righteous and just wrath rests upon us. In fact, the wages of our sin, as the Bible tells us, is death. That ultimately, we're going to stand before God on the judgment day. And he's going to judge us because of our sin. And those who are not in Christ will be condemned and spend eternity in hell. Those who are in Christ to everlasting life. That's the good news. I'm getting ahead of myself, right? So God and who he is, our sin separates us from that God. And sin, us, sin cannot be overcome by our good deeds. This is an important thing for us to remember. Sin is not something that we can, we can take care of on our own. Our sin stains every part of our life, as the Bible says in Isaiah 64, 6. Our, sin, our best efforts are but filthy rags before God. Just ask the youth group what that really literally means. But our, our sins are, but our, uh, but our good deeds are filthy rags before God because, because why? Because our sin stains what we do. Right? There's nothing we're ever going to be able to do to be able to overcome the stain of our sin on our own. We'll never be good enough. We'll never ever be able to work hard enough. You can't love enough. You can't give enough. Be compassionate enough. There's nothing you can do to save yourself. Self-righteousness and self-salvation is not a thing. It's impossible under all circumstances. There is no way to do it. Right? And so that's the bad news, right? That, that we were created by God, we fell into sin, and we were hopelessly stuck without any way out on our own. That's the bad news, right? But then the good news begins with P, right? That Christ came into the world to become a payment for those sins. That Jesus Christ lived the perfect life that we couldn't live to provide us the righteousness we need. And then he died on the cross to be the propitiation, the payment for our sins. That all of our sins are cast upon him on the cross. And his righteousness is imputed to us by faith. That Christ made that payment on our behalf. That he died on the cross for us. And then three days later he was resurrected proving that sin and death had been conquered. That's the P. And then E is everyone who believes 
will have eternal life. Everyone who puts their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, who comes to faith in Christ, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Right? Everyone who believes is reconciled to God. Everyone who believes is at peace with God. Everyone who believes has the wrath of God assuaged and taken away from them. Right? All the gifts that are given because of the gospel are available to everyone who believes. Right, And then L, that eternal life that we're given, that life that we're given begins the moment you believe and lasts for all eternity. It's eternal life. It lasts forever and ever and ever. Otherwise, it's not eternal. And so that's the gospel in a nutshell. And then we call people then to, to faith and repentance, to repent of their life and their self-righteousness and their sin and believe that gospel. And that's what we taught our teenagers to do. And that's what I'm encouraging you to then do, is to learn this yourself, right? Gospel. God, our sin, paying everyone life. And this is something that you can do in your own life. This is something you do on your own, right? And you can take what I've said and you can paraphrase it down. As my youth group will remind you, I'm pretty long-winded, you know, when I explain things. And that's okay. That's just who I am. I'm a preacher. But I can give you the short version. How about this? All right, God, right? God created everything, including us. And he created us to have a relationship with him. But our sin separates us from God. And sin can't be paid by God by our good deeds. That's the bad news. But the good news is Jesus made a payment for our sins through his life, death, and resurrection on the cross. He gave us the righteousness we need and paid the penalty for our sins. And everyone who believes in that gospel then will have life, and that life begins today and lasts forever. There's the real short version of life in six words. And so my encouragement to you then is, as a brother and sister in Christ, is to take this seriously and for you to get on mission to share the hope of Christ with other people. Now, what this is going to require out of you is to spend some time in the Word and, and connect the Scriptures you know, to, to, to the actual, like, uh, to the doctrines. And that you actually then are able to answer people's questions to a certain degree. But ultimately, you need to talk people through the fact that that God is who he is and we who are, are who we are in relationship to him and because of that we have failed him and that we would be stuck without him but God by his grace made a way for us and that's through Jesus Christ and that's how you explain the gospel and so my encouragement to you is dig deep now right in fact why don't you do me a favor if you're somewhere where you can write something down or if you you know have your note thing on your phone or we're just in a place where you can remember something here's what I want you to do I want you to think of like three people you know in your life right now. Three people you know in your life right now who need to hear the gospel. Three people that you know that need the love of Christ, that need to repent and believe the gospel. Three people that you know that need to turn to Christ and be saved. Write those down. And here's the thing now. Begin praying for God to open their hearts. And then this coming week, share the gospel with them. And here's, here's what we need to remember. It doesn't matter if you're perfect at this. It doesn't matter if you're great at this. Your job is to do what? Sow the seed because salvation is the work of God. Remember, we sow the seed. We love the people. We pray that God changes their hearts, right? And we never give up on them. That right there is how we share the hope of Christ. And so my encouragement is that you would take this and walk in this and grow in this. And then here's the last thing I want you to remember about the gospel. The gospel is not something that we do now and get entrance into the kingdom. But the gospel is how you now live. Because as you become a Christian, you come to find out, that, hey, by the way, I still fall down and bust my head from time to time, and I fall into sin. And the natural inclination of Christians is to do what? Is to go, I need to try harder. I need to work harder. I need to do better. I need to work this. I need to, you know, I need to do that. I need to do this. And I need to, you know, I just need to grit my teeth and get better. And Lord, why can't I get better? Right? The reality is there are things we need to do to protect our minds and hearts for sure. But ultimately, we need to come back to the gospel and remind ourselves right, that we need the gospel in the first place because we can't do it. And so you come back to that same place. You remind yourself, Lord, you are the creator of heavens and earth. Right? And you brought me into a relationship with you, not because of what I could do for you, but by your grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And that's what I'm holding on to. I believe that gospel then, and I believe it still today, and I need you to continue to change my heart and help me to overcome this sin. I'm never going to be able to make you love me by my actions. I'm never going to be able to make you um, happy with me by my, my inability to, my, my ability to never sin again. I realize that you love me by your grace. Help me to walk in that. Help me to continue 
to walk in that grace every single day that I trust and believe the gospel and I'm holding on that hope that I have in you. And so that's my encouragement for you this week. I know that's quite a little bit, but I have a lot to say. I haven't talked to you guys in a week anyway. So uh, with that being said, one last thing as we wrap up, I just wanted to share one final thing with you. Um, I don't typically make this a big deal, but I think that I just need to explain myself. We have been, we made a decision in May um, that it was time for us to open again as a church family. And we've made it really clear that's what we're doing. And we've done the things we can do to protect people's health. And we, we're going to continue to do those things. Um, and this last Sunday, we continued to have church service as well. We made that decision that we're not going to to close. Um, and, and the reason for that is simple, is, is, is we absolutely believe that as Christians, we need to be obedient to the authorities that God has given to us. But as we talked about, you know, a couple Sundays ago, that, you know, the scripture makes it really clear that you render to Caesar what is Caesar's, and then you render to God the things that are God's. And, and, and I say that to say is that when... When Caesar says, you know, that we need to pay taxes, then we need to pay taxes. And if he says we need to obey the speed limit, we need to obey the speed limit. But Caesar does not get to decide, you know, when and how we worship our Lord. And we're called to worship him. We're called to gather him, with, you know, together and worship him. We're called together to be together corporately, physically, in one place. We're called to trust in him. We're called to sing to him. We're called to have the reading and the preaching of the word. Just read, you know, first and second Timothy and see what, what that's all about. And in that, you know, my conscience is clear is that this is what we need to do as evidenced by those who have come. Um, our church family that's come, you know, has been, has benefited from the fact that we're able to be back together. Now I know some people are still have people in their lives that are at risk and they're staying home. And we certainly respect that. But what we're asking is for grace in the fact that we're trying to do what we feel is best with respect to honoring God in our lives. And ultimately, there's going to come a time when, when Caesar says that we need to do certain things and then we're going to have to say no because we're going to have to follow God and not men. Uh, and we're going to see more and more of this as we go along. You, you can mark my words. We will see more of this. By the way, I also want to thank you for those who prayed for John MacArthur's church. Um, they were able to have church service on Sunday, and, they are, their, and their church service was packed out uh, with people. And they didn't get the lights turned off on them. So praise the Lord for that. Uh, so I would just ask, as we, we get ready to pray together, if you would just continue to lift up um, the churches and the pastors in, in California. That you would just give, that you would just pray that God would give them wisdom and guidance and discernment to do what is right, and 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 also, I mean, according to their conscience, not every, I, I, what we're doing, it may not be right for other churches, right? And, and we respect that, but that we, we we would just ask that you'd pray for those pastors to have wisdom and guidance from heaven on when they should open and when they shouldn't open, um, but that they would be able to stand firm in their resolve that we serve God first above Caesar. So anyway, I rambled on long enough. Uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for your grace and mercy. We thank you for your love. I thank you for the youth group that I got a chance to minister uh, to this week. I thank you for every one of those teenagers and what, what you're doing in their hearts. I thank you for the way that you've given them a greater love for one another, that they were able to endure each other's uh, time together. I thank you for the outdoors that we got to spend. I thank you, Lord God, for your word. I thank you, Lord, for the fruit that you're bearing in their lives. And I am just pray praying for them as the next generation of Christ followers that are passionate for your word and in love with you, Lord God. And they have a high view of you and a high view of scripture. I thank you, Lord God, for your um, grace and mercy in our community. I pray, Father, you would just continue to give us the guidance and strength to be able to uh, proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, that we would be standing firm on your word and doing what you're calling us to do. And that, Father, we would put you above all other authorities in our lives. Father, I pray for the pastors in this in this community and in our state, Lord God, that you'd give them guidance and wisdom and open their eyes to when you think it is right for them to open. That, Father, but you would give them the courage to stand up against Caesar when it is time to stand up, that they would see, Lord God, that, that political power is always, by its nature, going to come against the church, that, it, that it, it must always assert itself at some point against those who have faith in Christ, because there is no other authority for us but, but you, Lord, that you are our highest authority and not the laws of men. 
And so, Father, I pray that you would guide us and strengthen us, Lord. I pray that you guide and strengthen the pastors. I pray for this church family, that you'd meet the needs of those who need to be met. We pray for Mr. Miller, Lord, that you help him to get home um, for, from his little bout with uh, his heart issue, Lord. We pray, Father God, you'd help him to get home uh, safely and recover quickly. We pray, Father, for, for all those who have been afflicted by uh, the COVID-19 through health. I pray, Father, for, for those who work and, 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 and face difficult situations. I pray for the Christians who go out into the world who are loving uh, to all other people, no matter what they believe, whether they believe that she would wear masks or not, that we'd be a light of Christ no matter where we go and what we do. I pray, Father, you glorify yourself in all that we say and do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so with that being said, I just want you all to know that you are loved and that you were prayed for and you were deeply missed. And we're hoping if you're here in Boron, come join us 11 o'clock Sunday morning as we will lift up our voices in song and that we will worship the, the, the holy and living God through, um, through, through the reading and the preaching of the word and through corporate singing and through fellowship. Anyway, again, you're loved, you're prayed for, and we will talk to you soon. Grace and peace. God bless you.